Hey guys, it's Mike here, and recently I got asked why I don't cover subtotals. I mean, it is an important Microsoft Office specialist skill. So I'm not sure why I didn't uh, put it into my Microsoft Office specialist training videos, but today I'm gonna show you how to use subtotals as well as filtering and sorting data. So in this activity, we'll look at loans in three different ways using three different worksheets. So for the first step, we're just going to do a simple loan and we're going to try and use the subtotal function to display the average amount borrowed in each city. So the thing that a lot of people forget before starting subtotals is that you have to have some kind of category or the values in the columns that you're looking for. Um, with the subtotals, uh, you have to have them organized because if you don't, that's going to create um, a mess when you start doing subtotals. So, for example, um, we want to calculate the average amount borrowed in each city. Now, if I don't group those cities together, there's three, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver. If I don't separate them and put them in their own groups, um, you're going to have subtotal of Toronto here and then subtotal of Toronto here. And you're going to have way too many numbers. So we want like kind of a summary of each three of the cities. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So when we go to, I'm going to highlight this range. And also, just a little side note, when you're doing subtotals, it won't work as a table. So if this information right here was in a table, you have to convert it to a normal uh, structured range of data like I've got it in now. So um, that's just a little bit of side information. If this was a table, you would convert it to a normal range. But anyways, um, we'll have to organize this data. So we'll go to the data tab with this highlighted. And then I'll go to the sort. And I want to sort by the city column and it really doesn't they didn't ask me in the question to put it in any particular order so i'm just going to say a to z is fine and you have montreal toronto and vancouver now that they're grouped it's much easier to do subtotal so um, with that range highlighted still i'll go over in the data tab still we'll click on the subtotal icon and then we don't want uh, we want the at each change in city so where you, wherever you see this at change in um, that's the column you should probably have organized and then we're going to use the average and we want the loan amount average okay so that's that's where our totals are going to be placed um, if we did the other ones that don't have numbers it would try and divide them and then you'd have this like division warning saying it can't perform division so it has to be um, in the loan amount we have to add the subtotal to the loan amount column okay so when we press OK uh, now you're going to get the uh, Montreal average here after all of the Montreal entries, the Toronto average, and the Vancouver average, and the Grand average at the bottom. So that's it for step one. That's how you do a basic subtotal uh, function to calculate the average. So the second task is more about filtering um, data. So we're going to um, filter the data on the loans to worksheet in a few different ways. So we're going to display a list of customers from Toronto or Vancouver who acquire loan between January 25th and March 21st, 2018. So uh, the first filter we add, so I'm going to highlight this information again. And then I'm going to click the filter button in the data group. And then on the drop arrow that we've created in the city column, we're going to take out, it said only in Toronto and Vancouver, which means we're going to take out the Montreal one. So we're going to filter that out. And then when it comes to loan date, we're going to click that filter arrow and I'm going to choose the date filter options here. And it in the question, it says between uh, January 25th and March 21st. So that's how this is how you would do that. So the um, the date style here is uh, day first. So it's the I'm sorry, the month first and then the day. So it's one slash 25 slash 2018. Okay, so it was after or equal to January 25th, and then but before March 21st. So that would be the third month, the 21st day in 2018 is the year. So now we're going to filter between those days, and we see that the only Vancouver and Toronto are included, and between uh, March 21st and January 25th. Um, we have one more step in this question because it asks us to arrange or sort uh, in city order and then loan date order. So 
The way you do that is in the data tab, click on sort, and we're going to do, so it asks us to sort two things on two levels. Uh, first, we're going to sort by city order, or sorry, yeah, city, we'll just hit A to Z, and then add a level, and then by loan date, so I'll click on loan date, and instead of saying oldest, newest, we're going to go from newest to oldest, and with those two sort options, um, this is what our data now looks like. And that's it for step two. So our last um, activity here in loans three, in the loans three worksheet, we're going to sort data and then we're going to uh, use subtotals again. So the first part about uh, use custom list to sort the records in ascending order of month. So it's not typically ascending order because ascending order means alphabetical order, but for months that wouldn't work. So we need a custom um, ascending order there. So I'll show you what I mean when we click on, I'll highlight this range first and then click sort. We're going to sort by the month, but we can't just say A to Z because it would go in alphabetical order and that would kind of mess up the months. That's not how uh, months work. So we're going to have to go to the drop arrow and click custom list. And then you can choose whether you want the long date form or the short one. Um, in the question, it uses kind of a long one. So I'm going to say the long month way and press OK. And then you see it's in the sending order from January, February, March, and so forth. So press OK that way. So that's what you would do um, to sort months. Um, you can just say alphabetical order because then April would become before anything else. And that wouldn't make sense. Uh, in this example. So that's it for part A of this third step. Now we're going to use the subtotal function to display the number of loans taken out each month and display the result type uh, in, in column J. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to highlight that range again. And then in the data tab, I'm going to click subtotals. So there's three things in the subtotals, uh, what we want to, what the change is going to be. So now that we actually have the, uh, we're going to use the subtotal function to display the number of loans. Okay, so that's an actual count function. So that's the first part, at each month. So we've already sorted the months, which is great. So we're going to say a change in the month. So we've already sorted the months. Um, so that works for each change. If we hadn't had those sorted, you'd have to do that first. And then it's going to show in column J, which is the last one, which is type. OK, so then press OK. And then we have the January count or the total amount of loans taken out. So in January, there was four, February 6, March, there was eight, uh, April, there was four and May, there was three. And the grand total of loans taken out is twenty five. And that's it for step. So I hope that helped you guys learn more about subtotals in Excel. And if you want more practice with Excel, if you're training for the Microsoft Office Special Exam, I've got a video on the core exam. I've got a whole video series on the expert exam. And if you want to learn more about Excel, you can check out my Excel course playlist as well. Thanks for watching.